Good evening. Welcome to this evening service of worship with the family of Kenne Parish Church. Whether you're here in our village, somewhere throughout Scotland, or the UK, or the rest of the world, we're so glad to have you join us for this time together. And this time of worship on Sunday evening is meant to be a time for reflection, a time for quiet and contemplation, a time for us to wind down this start of the new week as we venture into it together full of faith and confidence in the Lord. So in that spirit of faith, we now sing our first song together this evening. Take my life, Lord, let it be. good to be with you online together in worship. Tonight's scripture passage comes from the Gospel of Matthew, starting in chapter 18 at verse 21, the parable of the unforgiving servant. Let's hear the word of the Lord. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and his children and all that he had had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knee and implored him, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him that debt. 
But when the servant went out and he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant also fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused and put him in prison until he could pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed and they went out and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all the debt because you pleaded with me and you should not have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you. And in his anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all of his debt. So also my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Heather, for sharing that reading from scripture with us this evening. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and may the meditations of our minds and our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. You are the strength and the redemption of all who call on you in faith. Amen. So as we've heard in previous weeks, these evening services are going to focus on the parables of Jesus. More specifically, we're going to focus on his parables of grace. And as we've heard in weeks past, a parable by definition is a timeless story used to reveal truth. And we've also heard in past weeks that grace, by definition, is unmerited favor. We hear a lot in our world about merited favor, about what people deserve. But grace is about something else entirely. It's about unmerited, unearned favor favor. And grace is at the heart of the gospel message. We've said before, and it's worth repeating, grace can never be earned, can never be bought. Grace, for the record, does not play fair. It cannot be controlled. Grace goes where it wants. It chooses who it wants. It disrupts whoever it wants. So grace is amazing in every sense of the word. And these parables of Jesus that we're considering in these evening services, they reveal the timeless truth of God's amazing grace towards us. So tonight we're considering another parable from Matthew's Gospel that Heather read for us a few moments ago. It's the parable of the unforgiving servant. So let's take a look again at the opening verses of this passage. First, verse verse 21. Then Peter came up and said to Jesus, Lord, how often will my brother or sister sin against me and I forgive him or her? Do I forgive them as many as seven times? Seven times. Now, in the time of Jesus, rabbis often taught that one had a duty as a devout Jew to offer forgiveness for any wrongdoing up to three times. Now, considering that teaching, it seems like Peter, who often posed questions to Jesus on behalf of the other disciples, he was their leader, he probably thought that he was greatly upping the ante by a considerable margin. Never mind three times. How about seven times? Surely that is enough. And by the fact that Jesus went, or that Peter went beyond the teaching of the time, We can see that Jesus, perhaps, his teaching was starting to get through to Peter. Peter wanted to be more forgiving than necessary, and that, surely, is a good start. But Peter, even with his growth, he still tried to put a cap on God's grace and forgiveness at seven times. And it's worth noting that in the ancient world, the number seven was considered to be the most complete number, which is perhaps why Peter chose it. So Jesus heard this question, and his reply in verse 22 is striking. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but I say 77 times. 
or another translation is 70 times 7. So in saying this in verse 22, Jesus was not saying that we must forgive a total of 70 more times or 70 times 7 times mathematically and then we can be done. No, what this means is that our forgiveness of others must be completely total and totally complete. Completely total and totally complete. We must keep on forgiving. We must keep on showing grace, even and especially when it is hard to do so. And to illustrate this lesson, Jesus offers us the parable of the unforgiving servant. We hear the first part of this parable again. Jesus said, Therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children, all that he had, and payment to be made. And the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. Now, to feel the, the full force of this, I think we need to understand how much was at stake in this servant's debt. In today's money, this would be between, I think, 8 to 10 million pounds. 8 to 10 million pounds. Pretty much an impossible amount of debt for nearly anyone to pay back. And so when the servant is brought forward and the king hears that he cannot pay, he's about to take everything from the servant, and then the servant understandably asks for more time to pay off his debt. Isn't this just a human thing to do? Give me more time. I'll make it good, I promise. But then something remarkable happens. Out of pity for him, the text says, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. He didn't restructure it. He didn't refinance the debt. He didn't give him a deferment on payments. He forgave the debt entirely. Let that sink in just for a moment. The servant asked for more time to pay back an unpayable debt, but the king ignores this nonsense plea and instead goes to the furthest possible extreme by just canceling the entire thing. That's an amazing, amazing action. And friends, this is exactly what God in Christ has done for each of us. The tragic reality is that human sin and brokenness have created an unbridgeable gap between God and humanity. And the more that we, under our own power, try to bridge this gap, the greater the debt becomes. Like the servant in the parable, we have no real hope of ever working our way out of God's debt of working our way back into right relationship with God. Our debt is simply too great, and it's growing all the time. But this is not the end of the story. Like the king in the parable, Jesus has taken pity on us and completely canceled out that debt we have with God. Because of Jesus Christ, we are free and clear. We have no more debt. Our sin is has been canceled and removed. And this is grace for me and for you. God's grace is radical. It changes everything. But the fact that this grace is free for us, the fact that it is free for us does not mean that it is cheap. The fact that it is free does not mean that it is cheap. For God's free grace for us, it cost Christ everything. It cost Christ everything. If we refuse to accept this truth, if we refuse to hold this in our minds and in our hearts and believe it, then we'll be guilty of embracing what the German pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer famously called cheap grace, cheap grace, which is, to quote him, 
a grace without discipleship, grace without the cross, and grace without Jesus Christ living and incarnate. And the second part of this parable tonight shows us, I think, clearly that the forgiven servant was a true practitioner of cheap grace. As after he had his, his own massive debt completely canceled, the text tells us that this forgiven servant sought out another servant who owed him a much smaller amount of money, maybe the amount of a couple hundred pounds, not nearly as much, so a much smaller debt. And after he had his own massive debt forgiven, this same servant denied forgiveness and grace to the one who owed him. And consequently, as we heard in the reading earlier, the king heard about this, was enraged, and threw this servant into prison and reimposed the original debt. Friends, this parable is both a blessing and it's also a warning. It's a blessing because it tells us by God's free and costly grace, our sin truly is forgiven. God wants us to give us a clean slate. But this parable is also a warning because it tells us that once we have received this transforming grace from God, we must in turn live lives that reflect it. We must in turn offer grace to those who are around us. It is simply impossible, brothers and sisters, to live as both forgiven and unforgiving people. We cannot live, I'll say that again, we cannot live as both forgiven and unforgiving people. It does not work. God's free and costly grace transforms our lives. And it must also transform how we treat others as well. And through Jesus Christ, it is true. God has graciously forgiven us of everything. And so, going forward, may we live as people who have been forgiven so very much. And because we have been forgiven so much, may we offer the same free and costly grace to others that we meet. Amen. Let us pray. O sacred Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you who saves, you who shields, you who surrounds our homes and our lives this night and every night. Search us, O God, and know our hearts. Test us and know our thoughts. See if there are any wicked ways in us and lead us to repentance and to the ways everlasting. O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, forgive us our sins. Give us your grace yet again. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son of our Heavenly Father, forgive. O Blessed Trinity, you who are one, you who are true, you who are mighty, forgive, have mercy upon us. O God of life, this night, darken not to us your light. O God of life, this night, close not your gladness to our sight. Keep your people, Lord, in the arms of your sure embrace, shelter us all under the shadow of your wings. Be our light in darkness, be our hope in distress, be our calm in anxiety, be our strength in weakness, be our comfort in pain, be our song in the night. 
and as a sign of our faith in you, Lord Jesus. For though all that you have done, are doing, and will do for us, we now join our voices together in prayer, praying the words that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now sing our closing song of praise this evening. You rescued me. Friends, brothers and sisters, by God's amazing grace, we are forgiven, we are made whole. And because of the grace God has shown to us, we can go forth into this world and show grace, mercy, and love to those who we meet. May God empower us to do so, and in so doing, 
May the Lord draw all people to him. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may this blessing rest upon each of us and upon all who we love, this night and forevermore. Amen.